as well as the slides. So if you uh, needed to hop off early or maybe anybody joining late, they'll have access to the full information available to them. So we do also ask everyone mute yourself and turn off your camera. So thank you for doing that right away. We just wanna make sure everything is here really clearly. For our question and answer format, we did receive a few questions beforehand that we will be addressing first. And any questions you might have throughout the presentation, oops, please write them down on a piece of paper. And when we get to the Q&A, you can just pop them in the chat box during that time. Um, some of the questions might be answered through the presentation, but again, we can always go back to slides as well. And for those of you who might be new to Google Meet, you probably see something like this. And on the top right is the chat box. And if you click that button, this will pop up on the side and you'll see down by that arrow where you can send the message and everyone will see the question as well. Since we are virtual, I wanted to share who's on the call with you. So our house sharing team, we have Susan, our program manager, Daisy, our program assistant, myself, Angela, the marketing outreach supervisor, Tanya, our outreach coordinator, Heather, our case manager, and Rachel, our case manager. And we're introducing you to our Roomily team is Jill and Siggy. They're the co-founders of Roomily. And without further ado, we will move forward with our conversation with Supervisor Joe Simidian. Supervisor Simidian, thank you so much for joining us and welcome. We wanted to take this time to switch things up from our traditional events and just have a, a virtual chat with you. So thank you very much for taking the time out of your, I'm sure, busy every day to be with us. So for our first question, the, can you, were, I don't know if you were trying to say something, Supervisor Submitting, but if not, I'm just gonna, if you wanted to do a quick intro, I can just go into our questions as well. Uh, I was trying to say something and I hope the technology is now accommodating me. Can you hear me loud and clear again? Yes, we can hear you. All right, go to it. Uh, and I don't think an introduction is necessary. So, uh, hi, I'm County Supervisor Joe Submitty and let's take it from there. Great, thank you. So this past week, some counties across the state have begun easing a few of the initial restrictions. And as the County of Santa Clara continues to be in this phase that we were in, just wanted to get your perspective on how, how are these decisions made and on how certain counties are doing different things than other counties. You know, I, I, it's unlike any experience I have ever had in uh, many years now of being an elected official, and I've served at five different levels as a school board president, a local mayor, a county supervisor, a state assembly member, a uh, state senator. Uh, and it's unlike any circumstance I've ever encountered because um, it, it turns out that our public health officials, and each county has a public health officer, um, have incredible authority during uh, a time like this. And um, I, in fact, asked our legal counsel, our county counsel's office, am I correct in my understanding that even if the board voted 5-0 to overrule or direct the public health officer, uh, that would be uh, irrelevant, that she has the authority, or in some counties he has the authority uh, to make these decisions and to issue these orders. And the county counsel, our legal counsel came back and said, that's absolutely correct. So it's, it's uh, I think, a source of some confusion for the public that the people that they elected are not uh, actually uh, authorized to make these decisions, that they're coming from uh, very capable and talented public health officials, but that these are folks who previously have not been uh, known to the public uh, and certainly not by name. Uh, and now they're some of the most uh, famous folks at each county, uh, as far as I can tell. It, it is a bit of a challenge uh, because public health officials are by definition uh, doctors and scientists. They're not uh, often sort of schooled in, uh, you know, all right, now what do we do to help the economy recover, for example, any more than you'd want me to perform heart surgery. I, it just, it's a, a different set of skills, different set of understandings. And um, so we're, we're working that through in real time under challenging circumstances. Uh, our five member board of supervisors uh, can um, suggest, encourage, exhort, persuade, 
but uh, our, uh, our direct powers are in many ways very limited. That being said, there are areas that are outside the public health arena that are uh, nonetheless relevant where we can and should be taking direct action and are doing that. So uh, fair enough. Right. Yeah. And so you mentioned every county has a public health official. Who would be the who is the one for the county of Santa Clara? I know I've seen her face everywhere. Dr. So Dr. Sarah, Dr. Sarah Cody, uh, who um, we're fortunate, you know, grew up here in Santa Clara County, has been with our county public health department for more than 20 years. Uh, actually, earlier in her career, had fellowships with the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, so she's um, you know, she's well equipped uh, for, uh, you know, a pandemic unlike any we've seen in modern times. Uh, but as I say, I think um, the struggle for all of the counties is uh, that uh, the public health officials are, um, are health experts, but don't have the broader governmental experience uh, or economic development experience that um, needs to be engaged somehow in this exercise. We, uh, I think we were fortunate that the public health officials in the Bay Area acted together in unison uh, initially. I think understandably, because the circumstances are different in every county, uh, their different orders will diverge slightly as we go forward. Um, ours is not that different in Santa Clara County from most of the other counties, with the exception of San Mateo County, who's been a little bit more uh, aggressive about reopening, but uh, mostly what we have in Santa Clara County is very much like the rest of the Bay Area, uh, although we got to it three or four days later based on our public health officer's determination about when she could move. Great. Thank you for that. Um, next question. So there's no doubt that there is, there has been a housing and financial impact that this pandemic has had on our county and state. And it's also not new that we were in a bit of a housing crisis before this in renters within Santa Clara County had been living paycheck to paycheck. So with the current rise of unemployment, the eviction moratoriums, et cetera, what do you see the housing crisis becoming as we reach the later phases of quote, reopening the county and state? Well, I think the honest answer is I don't know, and I don't think anyone else does either. So I, um, I am very, um, cautious, uh, I, th I would say, about uh, not just uh, my ability to predict, but anyone who thinks they can predict what the world's going to look like six months or a year from now, um, I, I think is, uh, would be well advised to be a little bit more cautious about um, thinking we know how this all turns out. I don't think we do. And, uh, you, know, you know, the one thing uh, that I think we do know is that you know, recent history, we've been producing five or six jobs for every unit of housing, and that has created an extraordinary housing crisis. Um, the, that ratio may change going forward, but, uh, you know, even if we have um, a significant softening in the economy, and that I certainly do expect to be the case, um, you know, things have gotten so far out of whack that we're still going to have a challenging housing market, and the work that you all do are doing is still going to be uh, incredibly important, and uh, the work that Rumali is doing to take it to the next level is also going to be incredibly important. So, you know, um, uh, you know, I heard somebody the other day say that the solution to our housing and traffic crisis was a recession. I, I didn't think that was a particularly well chosen uh, solution. Uh, but you know, even if traffic softens, even if the housing market softens up a little. Uh, we're still going to need the kinds of solutions that we're talking about today. Right. Thank you. And kind of with connected to that, um, I've been actually reading a few articles that kind of slowly mention tech workers potentially moving moving out of the San Francisco and Bay Area because they might be able to work remotely for the rest of the year. Um, I think Facebook and Twitter actually had mentioned throughout 2020 their employees can work from home permanently. Yeah. How might you see that affecting the housing situation because of, you know, so many jobs are created to that ratio you mentioned? How do you think that might affect it with people who were paying those high rents that could leave and still have those, those jobs? I think that's, um, I, I do think there's likely to be some impact in terms of moving demand to other locations. But I also think 
that the other half of the story that I haven't read as much about or heard as much about over the last 10 weeks is I, I think a lot of people are also being reminded why they need to be in a common setting uh, at work uh, to work collaboratively and to brainstorm. There are limits to the, I mean, as extraordinary as the technology is, you know, there are limits. There's a reason people literally spend tens of thousands of dollars to fly somebody to the other side of the world to sit in a meeting when theoretically they could have simply done it on Google chat or uh, on a Zoom uh, conference. And the reason is that over the years, they've discovered uh, that they need that face-to-face -face human connection uh, to spark the kind of creative give and take um, that is, um, you know, in their view, profitable. So I, I think um, as much as we're reading about people saying, oh, look how much you can do online, and, and that's certainly always been the case, um, I think people are also discovering how important it is that uh, they have the opportunity to do the work in the presence of one another. I don't think that's going to go away. Um, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll come back for another chat in five years and see who's the best predictor. But I, I really think, um, yes, we'll see uh, greater and greater use of remote and online. But I, I still think the uh, the need for um, in person, face to face interaction, uh, the ability to you know uh, walk down the hall uh, is not going to disappear. Great. Yeah. Great point. Thank you. This next question is actually from uh, an attendee. And so with the current eviction moratorium that do differ by city, and I know the county has its own as well, with the discussion of potentially forgiving rent or extending the payback period for so many months, there could be a hesitation in homeowners or landlords to rent out their units when there is a possibility of not receiving that income that they need as well. So how would you respond to that and specifically to anyone contemplating renting out a home room during this time, or even maybe explaining a little bit more about what the moratorium means and the definitions that it, it has? I, I think um, the first thing I would say is that uh, I have been pleased that our Board of Supervisors has been mindful of the legitimate concerns that both renters and owners have. So if you listen to those conversations, they've been I think pretty pretty balanced in their understanding that anything we do has to uh, do right by both uh, folks who are owners and folks who are renters. Uh, they're also, I would um, underscore the fact that they're short term. So the first moratorium was uh, designed to cover just literally a couple of months uh, as uh, we make our way through, uh, you know, a once in a lifetime experience, we hope. And uh, the, the subsequent moratorium, which we've just acted on, runs uh, at, uh, at the longest through August 31st. So um, this is not a new way of being. This is just, a, I would say, a momentary uh, or a temporary uh, effort to manage the crisis at hand. But perhaps most importantly, I should say, there is nothing in the uh, action of a moratorium on evictions that uh, in any way, shape, or form addresses the continuing obligation to pay rent. And, uh, the, you know, some people, that's the concern, but uh, we have not taken action, nor have other local cities, uh, to my knowledge, uh, or counties, to, to uh, in, you know, uh, in any way address that, that question. Now, you know, what the future holds, anyone knows, but uh, I have to keep reminding people and assuring some people that the obligation to rent is still there. There's a conversation underway about how to make sure that this is all structured in a way that um, improves the likelihood that people who uh, have been unable to make their payments do make them uh, over some period of time. But perhaps most encouragingly, you know, the number of folks who have uh, said, you know what, I, I need to withhold payment of rent because of the COVID crisis is literally, you know, two, three, four percent uh, based on the data we've got. Um, the survey research uh, tells us that in any given month, typically, uh, you know, 95% of the folks show up uh, to pay their rent. Uh, that number, as I say, may have dropped three or 4%, but the overwhelming majority of people um, are still paying their rent. And um, I, I think that's reassuring to all parties uh, that, 
if people can, they do, and they because and because they understand the rent is due, uh, and they're going to go ahead and make the payment when it's due. The question. is that you've been a champion of the house sharing program since its inception and how might you see it being a viable option during and post pandemic well the beauty of the house sharing program is uh, given the demand for housing and the uh, inadequate supply you're always asking yourself how can we do something that's uh, as quick as possible uh, immediate is uh, the goal if you can make it happen and that is um, uh, you know, least expensive. And uh, with a house sharing program, you can create, quote unquote, literally hundreds of um, new units, if you want to call them that, new, new housing opportunities without uh, waiting for approvals, uh, without pounding a single nail, uh, without spending a dollar. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's a rare opportunity to take an existing uh, resource and uh, connect it with folks who need that resource. So I, I think that um, that benefit of the program is going to continue to um, uh, accrue no matter what our change circumstances look like. Uh, and it can only be a good thing going forward. Right, thank you. And we really thank you for supporting our program as you have and, and do and if there any, are any other questions for you specifically, what would be the best way or for the county for someone to to get a hold of the county or, or ask those questions? Or if anyone has a well, question now, should they contact you later or your office, what would be best? I would, um, uh, I would encourage folks to uh, either call or email my office, whatever is easiest for you. And uh, you know, everyone in the county has a district supervisor. Each one of us represents one fifth of the two million folks in the county. So that's 400,000 apiece. Uh, you know, I sometimes have to, uh, when I send my regrets, explain to folks that with 400,000 constituents, you can't personally meet with them all for a uh, half hour or an hour as the, somebody might like. But uh, I've got a, a very capable team in my office. Uh, the other supervisors do as well. So if you either call or email, and in my case, the easiest way is just go to the website for Supervisor Submitian, uh, and uh, you'll discover there aren't a lot of Supervisor Submitians there. Just uh, find your way online. Uh, give us a call. It's 408-299-5050, 408-299-5050, uh, or uh, shoot an email to supervisor.submitian, supervisor.submitian at bos.sccgov.org either or both of those would be just fine. And uh, notwithstanding the shelter in place order, we're still up and running. Every one of my staff is uh, working uh, and uh, you know, we're uh, heavily affected as you might imagine, lots of phone calls and emails uh, you know, into the thousands coming in right now. But um, so please give us a, a little bit of a pass in terms of how quickly we can get back to you, but we're moving as quickly as we can to help as many people as fast as we can. So thank you for that. Great, thank you. So any questions anyone has today, please send them over his way in the, in the way he mentioned his number and email. And then we'll also put that in um, with our follow-ups later if you guys miss, missed catching that for you. So thank you, Supervisor Simidian. We really appreciate it, your time. Um, feel free to hang for the rest of the webinar if you like. If you have to go, we totally understand as well. But thank you so much for your time and for your support. Regrettably, I do, but I will get a copy of the webinar after the fact, as you indicated earlier, so I'll have a chance uh, some evening when I'm sitting with my feet up to make sure I understand the rest of the program's content. And thank you for the work you're doing. As I said, it's, um, it's a challenge that can be met and mastered, and you are part of that effort. So much appreciated. Be well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're very grateful for that time. Um, we will move on with the presentation. And the next thing we're going to go into is just what is house sharing. Um, so we want to briefly talk about our program, highlight a bit of it if it's new to you. 
So, and, and also talk about our, our partnership with Roomily, the online platform. So what is house sharing? House sharing is actually based on a national model. And in addition to our county, the county of San Mateo with hip housing has been running a house sharing program for 20 plus years. Home match in San Francisco, as well as Fremont, Marin and Costa Conta County. There are a few in Southern California, um, Texas and along the East coast of the US. So what is house sharing? House sharing is when two or more unrelated people share a home and each person has their own room, but they share common areas, a kitchen, living room. House sharing can also be done with accessory dwelling units, EDUs, as well as attached studios. We have had clients in the past rent out a studio on their property through our program. Um, you can also be renting an apartment and rent the apartment out or be renting a home. What our program is, it's a free matching service. So we have been matching home providers and renters together based on their preferences and budget. And moving to present time, how are we doing that during the shelter in place? We are very mindful of everyone's concerns and sensitive to the fact that house sharing may not be for you in this moment, which we completely understand. And as a program, we have adjusted how we provide our service to best accommodate everyone. So our current process has relatively stayed the same. Anyone interested would call us, go on our website, send an email, and the way you can check the qualifications. As mentioned earlier, it could be a rented apartment or home, so you don't have to be a homeowner. Um, for renters, we do ask that there is able, the ability to show they could pay $750 a month per rent, and that's just with our average rents being about $900 for our program currently. Um, step two after the qualification check is just the application and intake and what used to be an in-person appointment is now collected via email or phone. So on that phone call, we get your application information and that's where we get to know you and your needs and what you're looking for. Once that piece is taken, we, we do background checks as well during this time that has been on hold because of the offices being closed. But once everything opens up, that'll be reinstated again. So once we pass that step two, we move on to the online access, which is our new Roomily partnership where you can make an online account to show your rental listing or look for rental listings and directly chat with people. And they will talk about that more in depth soon. And if you meet someone that you would match with, we still provide our living together agreement. And it's a lease as well as some really good questions that help set expectations. For example, are you sharing condiments or is there something that needs storage? Is there an area for that? Real detail to just help set up those expectations. And then we do continue to check in and do monthly contact and follow-ups for the first three months and then every so often after. Again, just a reminder, if there are any questions, please hold them until the end. We could always come back to this slide or any other slides. So with that, I'd now like to introduce you to the Roomily team to further discuss the online platforms. Hi there, thanks Angela. I'm just double checking, can everyone hear me? Can you hear me, Angela? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so thank you again, and I'm just going to take a few minutes uh, to introduce you to Roomily, the company that I am co-founding with my business partner, Siggy Rubinson. And we began Roomily in order to um, help address the housing shortage and the affordability crisis. And we're so glad to be working together with Catholic Charities House Sharing Program for the County of Santa Clara. Next slide, please. So um, we want to um, just share um, a, a highlight of what the process is like online, just to kind of show you how simple it is. And um, I won't be getting into too many details. Uh, I don't want to bog you down with too much information. Um, but again, we can be available for any questions you have um, as well. So to begin, all you need to get started is an internet connection and a connected device like a computer or a smartphone or an iPad or tablet. Um, if you don't have one or prefer not to use one, um, the Catholic Charity staff can still help you. So please let us know and don't let that um, part stop you from joining up in the program. Just wanted to let you know that. So the first step is, as Angela said, to call the Catholic Charities team um, or email them. And once you're connected and pre-screened, 
you'll be given a password to get into the Roomily matching platform. Next slide, please, Angela. So from here, um, you will be able to create an account and a profile um, once we verify you and your email. And we'll also get to information that will be helpful in order to help you get started. So um, whether you're a renter or a home provider, everyone will create a short profile. And this will allow you to share a bit about yourself so that potential housemates can get a sense of you know, who you are, your daily routine, for example, if you're working or if you're a student or if you're retired. Um, if you're a home provider, who else lives in your household? And that sort of other you know, key information. It's really up to you to write in what you want to share. And we do encourage authenticity so that potential housemates can really learn about who you are right off the bat. So as you can see on the screen, I created a sample profile. I'm here with my dog. Um, I mentioned a few other things where I live, that I work from home, that I'm a mom, that we're up early, um, and so on. Next slide, please. So after you complete your profile, if you're a home provider, you're going to start with the um, creating your listing process, which is also very easy. Um, I'll do a. Um, Angela is driving the presentation, but we'll be going through a couple screen sh sh um, sh shots to show you how to do this. And before you get started, it's important to actually um, have your rental price set and also have your photographs ready to upload. And then once you have that ready and you're um, you're ready to get started, you will answer a few questions. And on the left hand side of your screen, you can kind of see just a slice of some of the questions that will be asked, they're pretty typical questions, um, basic information about the rental features, some of the amenities, household rules and expectations, your location, et cetera. Um, and then you'll be able to upload the photographs um, that you have taken of this space. And then the last picture that was just um, shared is what your profile, your rental listing will look like. Um, and it's a really simple, easy process to use, and you can really create a wonderful listing that show, showcases the best features of your home. Um, and we do hope that you, know, you, again, will be as authentic as possible, because we believe transparency and clear expectations are really key to a successful match. Um, once we're done with this step, you can press post and it'll appear on our rental listing. Um, next slide, please. So once you're live, after you press post and you're live, you'll be part of our rental listing and renters will be able to come to this homepage for all the listings and this is what they'll see. Um, if you're a renter, you'll be able to search by filters that are important criteria such as location, rental price, availability, you know, time-wise, as well as other features. Basically, all the criteria that you might want to set to find what you need as a renter. Uh, next slide, please. So when um, a renter sees a room that interests them, they begin a conversation with a home provider through our messaging platform. And here is a screenshot of what it looks like in our platform. But these messages will also be delivered right into your own email inbox for convenience. So you can message potential housemates and start an exchange in order to get to know one another a bit. And then when you're ready, and if you're ready, you can exchange phone numbers so you can set up calls or video calls, um, which is what we're recommending, especially right now, to reduce in-person in meetings as much as possible for health and safety reasoning. Um, it's great to have several interviews, actually next slide please, on the phone or in, per, um, in on video chat because it's a great way to get to know each other obviously um, in addition to just emailing back and forth. Um, to help you through this process we provide interview tips, um, icebreakers, and we also include top questions to ask so that you can get the information you really need from one another to ascertain if you're going to be a good match. And the interviewing information sharing should go both ways. Next slide, please. So you can also use your smartphone or Zoom call to take a potential housemate on a um, tour 
or you can record a tour as I have done here to show you as a sample um, if that it makes you more comfortable. And we actually have a place in the listing to upload a YouTube link if you'd like to record a home tour for everyone to see with your listing. And I kept mine pretty short. I just showed the bedroom and the bathroom as an example. Um, but we would also encourage you to share other areas that are going to be shared, such as the kitchen or outdoor areas and the living spaces. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to um, share a little bit about the online portion of the house um, sharing program that Catholic Charities is now offering. And I do want to echo that whether it's a good time to meet someone or if you prefer to wait um, and you're more comfortable in light of COVID-19 and shelter in place methods, you might want to wait, but it's also a good time to perhaps post a home or your rental, your room rental, um, if you're still just considering it, because you can take your time and get to know people um, during the interview process, um, and then also get the support you need to know that you'll be safe if a new housemate does move in. Um, all, overall, we wanted to show you that there are some really easy features that make uh, this process very easy and convenient for you, and that you can find someone in the safety of your own home and on your own schedule. And we also want to share that um, once you are matched with someone after you have signed the Living Together Agreement that Angela referred to and enter into a lease, we will obviously close and save your listing if you decide to find another roommate at a later time, which is also another convenience. But more importantly, you know, we'll be here to continue to support you during your house sharing journey. So th that's all I wanted to share for now. Um, and I hope that you got a sense of how easy it is and how convenient it is to use the online features. And I also wanted to let you know that we're really just getting started. And as the days and months go by, we're going to be building in more features to make the process even better. And we also help that we also hope that it helps more people step up as a result. Um, because we are all in the housing crisis together and we really need the power of spare rooms to help alleviate the shortage. Um, and that's all I've got to share for now. So I'll um, set, give it back to you, Angela. Great. Thank you, Jill. That was awesome. Um, again, to reiterate, any questions for Roomly specifically, they can still be asked towards the end as well. So just hold on to those questions and we will be getting to Q&A soon. So why house share? Um, again, we're conscious that this is such a unique time and we are mindful of that. House sharing is not for everyone and we understand, especially now. So we do see that with the adjustments we've made as a program, we still have been helping house people who need it and get them into house sharing situations. So one thing we like to show is what our program provides, which is this benefits chart that we created. So on the left, you can see some options people may have for listing a room or looking for a room. So Craigslist, Zillow, Nextdoor, Silvernest, our program. And then we just like to highlight that we have all those checked boxes at the top, which is a good thing. So we're free. Um, we do background checks, reference checks. We have matching guidance. So even with the online platform, we still get to know you in the initial intake and we can kind of guide you to who we know might be a good fit for you on there, um, as well as the agreement and our Roomily platform partnership. And while we can continue to tell you how great we think our program is, I wanted to show you words from current program clients who have been matched. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen really quickly and switch over to a video. Um, it's a 30 second snippet of a testimonial video and we have the full video on our website. So just bear with me for a few seconds. Okay, so I'm going to play this video for 47 seconds. You should have some audio. If not, we'll send a link to the video as well, but this should work.
and spinning wheel of doom. Okay, just one second, guys. Home share was in the paper, and I'm, you know, familiar with Catholic charities. The minute I met my roommate, uh, we just clicked. So they go far and beyond the, the call of duty, I would say. Yeah, I've been blessed. I'm still being blessed. Yeah, it is. It's nice to have somebody in the house instead of, you know, just living all by myself. Um, I really do. I love the fact that somebody's here with me. <laughs> If we want to be a place that really does maintain some sense of community, where we know one another by first names when we go to the grocery store or the dry cleaner or the gas station, then we're going to need to make a place for people. Okay, so I hope everyone was able to hear that. That was just a snippet of a testimonial video we did a while back of some current clients. So we're going to move forward here with the rest of the presentation. I will share my screen again in just one moment. Okay, so we're going to move to our Q&A. So thank you for listening to the webinar so far. We did have a few questions come in beforehand through registration, and I believe a majority of them were answered, um, but there was a few. So one of the questions was, is this a temporary or a permanent program? And we looked at this question and can definitely be answered in a few different ways. So I'll try to answer at a couple different angles for that person that answered. So from a nonprofit perspective, um, this person could be asking if it's permanent or temporary housing. It's not temporary housing. It is a permanent housing situation as long as the parties are in mutual agreement in the terms of length. And we match the home provider with a renter and you sign a lease as if you were doing that on your own or renting an apartment on your own. From a programmatic perspective, we support our participants ongoing. As I mentioned, we continue to check in with our matches and the program is ongoing depending on funding streams and we're always open to discuss new ones so we can always use that financial support. So thank you for asking that question. And then now would be the time to put some questions in the chat. So I see that a few have come through. So the first question we have here is, do you plan to explain your partnership relationship with the Foothill Danza Community College District? Um, that's a great question. I'm going to refer that to Susan, our program manager, that she could answer that for you. Hi, yeah, um, thanks for the question. Um, you know what, right now it's, um, we can just say it's on hold. Um, we're in communication with our contacts at Foothill College. Um, initially, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, um, we were working exclusively um, uh, with Foothill College to assist them with um, the, some of the housing insecurity that their students were, ex were, um, were experiencing. And so we met with them and we were doing some work with them to try and recruit some local um, housing providers um, near and around the Foothill campus. And um, we began our work um, in the around the holidays and um then you know things just as the uh you know the year uh progressed um things have just been kind of on hold until we can get more of an assessment of what the college uh what foothills needs are um so that was kind of our that's where we left our last conversation is let's reassess um when we know more what the needs are and then we'll get back to you know kind of how that partnership can go forward um i hope that answers your question Great, thank you, Susan. And 
Another question, um, if there is any way you can put together two families, both not currently rent, both not currently renting so they can rent a house. Did you want me to answer that, Angela? You can answer that, Susan. <laughs> okay, so um, is there any way you can put together two families, both not currently renting, so they can rent a house? Um, that's a great question. Um, it's not a service that we are currently doing right now but um, a lot of what our a lot of what our service is 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 referral um, so there may be um, something that someone on our staff might be able to point you in the direction to we're very fortunate to have um, a lot of resources available just through our agency at Catholic Charities um, so that is not a service of the house sharing program but it's a great idea um, it may be something that we can kind of throw out uh, maybe with our new partnership uh, that might be something that we can put on the table as a, a point of discussion but as far as right now, the house sharing service does, uh, program does not offer that service. But if um, you know families that are in need do do um, contact our program for resources or just you know kind of um, you know maybe where they can get started, and, and we we are able to provide um, you know just resources and, and things that they that might be able to help folks in that situation. But that's a great idea and a great question, and I really appreciate you um, submitting it. Thank you. Um, another question came in. Susan, let me know if you want to jump on this one also. For a few years, word and community is very difficult to get a call back from Catholic Charities for shared housing and social workers have given up trying to get through what has changed or hires. Um, I'm not really sure what the question is. I mean, for the house sharing program, We've been doing it for just over two years now, um, so I'm not sure if you're speaking of it's hard to get in touch with the house sharing program as it exists right now, and if, if, if that's so, I do apologize. I know we do receive lots of inquiries and lots of calls, and you know we do our best to respond um, you know, within three business days to all of our inquiries. Um, so if you, if you, you know, please feel free to give out our number and, uh, you know, the, the website information to any folks that are interested in contacting. And, and like I said, we, we, we are successful at getting back to folks within three days. So um, I hope that addressed your concern. And again, thank you for the feedback. And, and we always try to, um, you know, take feedback con constructively and see where, how we can improve our processes. So thank you very much. Are there any more questions? Um, if anyone has a question that they feel might be a better one-to-one -one conversation, they can email us as well. I'll put our contact information here. So to get in touch with a house sharing program, you can call our phone number, send an email, or on our website, we have an inquiry form. Even if you just have general information, we can get your information that way and contact you. And any questions for Broomley, we have their email on there as well and their website. So if there are no more questions, again, we wanted to say a big thank you for joining us today as the Affordable Housing Month with SV at Home wraps up. We will be sending a follow-up email to everyone with the recording of the webinar, the slides. I'll also put a link to the testimonial video if that may have not happened to work for some people and Supervisor Sibidian's info as well. Um, I know some questions came in for him, so we want to make sure you get that information to him as well. And any other questions you have, please feel free to reach out to us. And we, we're really thankful again. This was our first webinar. It went great, I think. So we're really appreciative of everyone who joined us. And thank you so much. And we hope to chat with you soon.